Good afternoon, brothers, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello, hi. Well, today, brethren, sisters, we are going to be doing a word study video. Study of the word eternal, okay? And uh, this video, by the way, is the very first video where I'm going to be using my new microphone. <laughs> Several brethren have um, pointed out that, uh, you know, whenever I were doing videos with this uh, new laptop, whenever I would do something like show the scriptures or turn my head that way or this way, that my voice would cut out. And um, when it comes to this kind of tech stuff, I have no idea what I'm doing or what I'm looking for. So I asked of a brother, you know, hey, what do you recommend? And this was one that he recommended. And so... Um, Hopefully, with this little microphone, uh, the, my voice cutting out or the sound cutting out will end. Uh, let me know how this goes um, in the comments section, if you will. But for this video, going to use several resources. Going to be using Webster's 1828 Dictionary, okay? And also, too, going to be using... A Strong's Concordance. This is my new Strong's Concordance. No pun intended. I have a, uh, another Strong's concor uh, Concordance, but that one is kind of outdated, so to speak. So I went and uh, picked this one up, okay, which is a little bit more updated. Um, it does have some of the uh, words that are not in the older one that I have. So going to be using this as well. Got quite a bit of stuff we're going to be going through here today, okay? <clears throat> so, eternal. The word eternal appears 47 times in the authorized version of the scriptures, okay? What is very interesting to note is that eternal appears only twice in the Old Testament. Hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting. So, you're going to need your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Incidentally, if you're watching this video and you decide you're going to follow along, um, let me tell you something. If you're not using the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, this isn't going to work well for you, okay? Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is the one true God. You need his only one true word, the authorized version of the scriptures. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? So, uh, if you happen to have a Webster's 1828 dictionary, go ahead and go look up the word eternal. So, eternal, as defined by Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Eternal, adjective, without beginning or end of existence. The eternal God is thy refuge. And it says Deuteronomy chapter 33. Go there in the authorized version of the scriptures. And Deuteronomy chapter 33 just happens to be the very first mention of the word eternal in the authorized version of the scriptures, okay? First mention. So, Deuteronomy chapter 33, we will be reading verses 26 on to verse 29, okay? Follow me along. Deuteronomy chapter 33, beginning at verse 26 on to verse 29, to close out that chapter. We begin. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun. Jeshurun means highly favored. Who writeth upon the heaven in thy help and in his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms and he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee. 
and shall say, destroy them. Now, very quickly, now, verse 27 is the very first appearance of the word eternal in the scriptures. But look, number one, what is it attributed unto? God, the eternal God. In definition, eternal, adjective, without beginning or end of existence, the eternal God is thy refuge, Deuteronomy chapter 33, okay? Also, too, in this verse, look at this. And underneath are the everlasting arms. Everlasting, eternal, everlasting in the same verse. See that, right? Okay. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee and shall say, destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also his heaven shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel. Who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord? The shield of thy help. And who is the sword of thy excellency? And thine enemy shall be found liars unto thee. And thou shalt tread upon their high places. Hmm. So we see eternal linked with God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. And notice also in verse 27, everlasting. Isn't that interesting, huh? Isn't that interesting? <clears throat> now, looking again in, looking again in Webster's 1828 dictionary, eternal adjective without beginning or end of existence. The eternal God is thy refuge, Deuteronomy chapter 33, which we just looked at. The second definition, without beginning of existence, to know whether there be any real being whose duration has been eternal, and then it has in quotations, lock. On that, Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. Not James, Brad. Hebrews chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 3. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days, nor end of life, but made like unto, the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Melchizedek is Jesus Christ, okay? Melchizedek, in Genesis chapter, that was, what chapter was that? Genesis chapter 14, okay? With Melchizedek, okay? That was the Lord Jesus Christ. A precarnate form, you could say. But Melchizedek is Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? And look at verse 3 again. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days. Beginning of days. Nor end of life. But made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Hmm. Okay? Okay? All right, now let's look at the third definition here in Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Without end of existence or duration. Hmm. Everlasting, endless, immortal. And it says here that they may obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. And it quotes 2 Timothy chapter 2. So let's go there. 2 Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2, 
verses 1 on to verse 10. Okay? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 10. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Of the seed of David, meaning king of the Jews. Where our Lord Jesus Christ, when he comes back uh, at his second coming, is going to rule and reign at Jerusalem for a thousand years, the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory, without end of existence or duration. Hmm. Hmm. Also, too, also, too, okay, it says here, what shall I do that I may have eternal life in uh, Webster's 1828 Dictionary? And it quotes Matthew chapter 19. Go to Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. Very important to remember about Matthew chapter 19. What are we to remember? This is before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, the Son of David, the King of the Jews, was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people. Okay? We have to remember that. Keep that in mind. Okay? Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. <clears throat> we will read... Verses 13 on to verse 22. Oh, excuse me. Verse 16 on to verse 22 in Matthew chapter 19. Verse 16 on to verse 22. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, good master, what good thing shall I do? that I may have eternal life, eternal life. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Now see right there in verse 17, our Lord is addressing how he, how this uh, rich young ruler called him good master. Okay? Not the son of David. Didn't refer to him as the son of David, their promised Messiah, their king, okay? Only good master, not thou son of David, okay? And our Lord here in verse 17, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God, referring to himself. Because the rich young ruler did not see the Lord Jesus Christ as God, as their promised Messiah, okay? Okay? the son of David, their king, who has promised them, especially within the book of Isaiah, the everlasting father in Isaiah chapter 9, okay, um, that their Messiah, the Jewish Messiah, is going to be God the Father, okay? Keep that in mind. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, how come he doesn't say eternal life there? Huh? Look at that. 
But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt, shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What like lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, addressing the issue of the heart, the issue of the heart, okay? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. See, this young man's uh, heart was on his worldly possessions, not unto his Savior, not unto his King, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. See, his heart was on the worldly things, not on the things of eternal things, which our Lord Jesus Christ was offering the kingdom of heaven. You see? Okay? Okay? And also here now, back in the um, Webster's 1828 Dictionary, it says, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Okay? And looking in the uh, beginning of this uh, number three definition, without end of existence or duration, everlasting, endless, immortal. Go to Jude. Jude, the book of Jude. And remember, dear friends, Jude does not have chapters. I know it's cute to say that, but no, no, don't do that. Okay? <clears throat> Jude, um, let's begin from verse 4 on to verse 7 in Jude. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ, one and the same, okay? I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Number three, definition for eternal, without end of existence or duration. Everlasting, endless, immortal. And it says here in Jude 7, eternal fire, which hell is. Okay? We get this thus far? Okay? Now, I want to also point to you about uh, this definition here. Without end of existence or duration, everlasting, endless, immortal. Micah. Micah chapter 5. Micah chapter 5. Come on, Micah. Micah chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 3. Micah chapter 5, verses 1 and verse 3. Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He hath laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. The judge of Israel, our Lord Jesus Christ, the son of David, God our Father. Okay? 
But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth, whose goings forth have been from old, who have been from of old, from everlasting. Talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth hath brought forth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. And you can tie verse 3 into Revelation chapter 12, talking about the woman travailing to give birth unto a man-child who is going to rule all nations with a rod of iron. You can tie uh, Micah chapter 5 verses 1 under verse 3, verse 3 especially with Revelation chapter 12. Okay? It's talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. The everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. Okay? You with me? Okay? Now, let's look at the fourth definition. Perpetual, ceaseless, continued without intermission, and fires eternal in thy temple shine. Dryden, whatever that means. Go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Not Galatians, Brad. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have mercy, as we have received mercy, excuse me, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. <laughs> like those telling you that eternal security is from Genesis on to Revelation. That it was faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation. That eternal security was always there. It's a lie. That's a lie. We'll get more into that later. Okay? But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every, man, every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Brethren, sisters, church of the living God, I'm your servant. My wife and I, we are your servants. You got to remember, to preach the scriptures is not a profession. It's a passion. It's a passion. Remember that. Remember that. Okay? Verse 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We have this treasure. What treasure is that? Our Lord Jesus Christ. God our Father, okay? In him is hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, okay? But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. What is that treasure he's talking about? Our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Let's continue. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Hold your place here. Hold your place here and go to Galatians. Galatians. <clears throat> uh, 
Galatians. Where is that? Galatians, one second, got to find this, brethren. Sorry about that. I was looking right at it. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. We are sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay? The Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. Okay. And looking back here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellency of the power may be of God, not of us. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the Lord is that spirit. One God. Not three divine persons. <laughs> Nonsense. Tom Fuller. Tom Fuller. Nonsense. It's Trinity. Stupid. Okay? Oh. Did I just say, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. All you wicked Calvinists out there. Get a load of that. Okay? Let's continue in this. And the life which, I, in uh, verse 20 in Galatians chapter 2. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Christ liveth within me. Okay? Christ liveth within me. Go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Picking up at verse 8. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, perplexed it, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Hold your place there. Hold your place there. <clears throat> Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Okay. <clears throat> oh, no. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. <clears throat> verses 6 on to verse 10, okay? In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 6 on to verse 10. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. I'm right here. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my, my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and necessities in persecutions in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then, then am I strong. Go back to uh, chapter 4 in 2 Corinthians. Picking up at verse 10. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. 
You know, some people like to take that thing out of context where he says, uh, what is it? That there is no temptation happened to, uh, to you, but that which is common among men and with the temptation will give you a way to escape, okay? To escape the temptation. But see, people nowadays, especially these Christians that come from those church buildings, okay? They like to make that into something that the scriptures doesn't say. That they twist it to say that, well, God won't give you more than you can handle. Bloop. God won't give you more than you can handle. No, it's about, when he says that, it's about temptation, okay? That he will give you a way to escape what? The temptation, okay? And looking at right here, at verse 11, For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. What does this mean? Guess what, dear friend? You're of the church of the living God? Saved, born again, converted? The Lord's going to give you things in your life far greater than you can handle. Why? Why is that? that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. See, because if the Lord didn't give you what you couldn't handle, then that would make you self-sufficient, wouldn't it? Think about that. For you, you, I'm, I'm sure you've heard that before, about, oh, God won't give you more than he can handle, and they'll go to that about where it talks about temptation. Okay? About temptation. That he gives you a way to escape the temptation. Okay? It's not that he won't give you more than you can handle. He will purposely give you more than you can handle so you can depend on him. See? You get it? You get it? Okay? Don't fall for that. Don't fall for that. Because if he won't give you more than you can handle, then you're self then you're self-sufficient. Hmm. <laughs> Are you one of these self-sufficient Christians? <laughs> Good luck with that. Good luck with that. Let's continue. So then death, uh, picking up at verse 12. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed Day by day, for his mercies endureth forever. For his mercy endureth forever. Excuse me. For our light affliction, check it out, here it is, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Uh, aren't we supposed to walk by faith and not by sight? Huh? Okay? Okay? That was for the fourth uh, definition here in uh, Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Okay? Also got another one. Go to Hebrews again. Go to Hebrews again, chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, <clears throat> verses 1 on to verse 10. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 10. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins, who can have compassion on the ignorant, and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. And by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sins. And no man... 
some of y'all got to really ingrain this into your head. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. As he saith, saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek is the Lord Jesus Christ, people. Okay? Uh, check out Brother Brian's video about Melchizedek, about, uh, I believe, the video. If, if one of you can find that and link it in the comment section, please do so, about how he, uh, he goes through showing conclusively that Melchizedek, Jesus Christ, Okay, let's continue. Okay, reading verse 6 again. As he saith also in another place, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared, though he were his son, capital S, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Eternal salvation. Who is the author of eternal salvation? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? We're going to get into this a little bit more deeper as we continue. Okay? But eternal salvation is in the scriptures. Yes, it is. We just saw it. Okay? In verse 9 in Hebrews chapter 5. And notice, too, that it's in the book of Hebrews. And the book of Hebrews is written unto the Jewish people for the time of Jacob's trouble. Because the book of Hebrews breaks down everything that you and I, the church of the living God, already grasp. Okay? Okay? You get it? Now let's continue. Called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And as we already looked at, as we have already looked at, where was that? In Hebrews chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 3 again. Let's read that again. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave the tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth the priest continually. Melchizedek is the Lord Jesus Christ, people. Our Lord Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay? You have to, you have to, you have to get that through your head. This uh, Trinity thing... Uh, uh, if I can remember, I'll, I'll link a video um, in this one in the description box about uh, proving that the Trinity is Catholic. And we all know that Catholics are really good Christians, ain't they? <clears throat> Beg your pardon. Okay. So, now let's look now at the very final definition given in Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Number five. Unchangeable. Existing at all times without change as eternal truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Okay? Not meaning that the, the original, whatever, are up there in heaven. No. The Lord spake it. Here it is. Here it is, the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? It, it, it behooves me that these Jesuit-trained uh, cemeterians, these textual critics like to use that argument. Well, the originals are up there. Now, shut up. 
Shut up. Just shut up. But for the fifth definition, go to Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Come on, fingers. Work with me. Malachi chapter 3. One verse. Verse 6. Oh, you know what? Yeah, let's just read verse 6. In Malachi chapter 3. For I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob, Israel, are not consumed. There's a remnant of the Jew, of Israel. Yes. Yes. And there will be a remnant of the Israelites, of the Jews. Yes. Okay. A remnant after the time of Jacob's trouble that will believe, or during the time of Jacob's trouble that will believe. Midway. I believe anyway. So, so we see the definition as far as Webster's 1828 Dictionary on Eternal. Okay? Now, let's go to the Strong's Concordance for this. Okay? Strong's Concordance. If you have one of these yourself, go ahead. Follow along. Follow along. Follow along. Hold on. I got to find this. Okay. Eternal. All righty. Now, like I said, the word eternal appears 47 times. Don't. Worry, we're not going to look up all occurrences of the word eternal. But the very first uh, mention of the word eternal, which we already looked at, was in Deuteronomy chapter 33. Okay? And the second appearance of eternal in the Old Testament, only twice, is Isaiah. Go to Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60, we will be reading verses 1 on to verse 15 in Isaiah chapter 60. Oh, beg your pardon. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 on to verse 15. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness to people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Now this is talking, um, this is future prophecy that is going to be fulfilled with the kingdom of heaven. Okay, the thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, let's continue. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the king to the to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about, and see, all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from far, and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Hold your place here. Go to Revelation. Revelation chapter 17. I want to show you something. Something very interesting. Revelation chapter 17. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 17. Okay, now let's see this again. Okay, in Isaiah chapter 16. In verse 5. Then shalt thou then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because of because the abundance of the sea, abundance of the sea 
shall be converted unto thee. The force of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth. Who is the whore? Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, i.e. Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism. Okay? Verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Really? So, waters here in Revelation chapter 17, verse 15, are likened unto what? Peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 5. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The force of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Okay? People are likened unto, right there, sea, waters, likened unto people. Okay? And what is a person, by the way? Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? You get it? Let's continue. The multitude of camels shall cover thee, the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah. All they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall shew forth the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these that fly as the cloud, and as the doves to their windows? Surely the isles shall wait for me. And the ships of Tarshish first. And the ships, wait, 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 wait. And the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of the Lord thy God, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Again, the fulfillment of this will be during the kingdom of heaven, the thousand-year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ on the earth. Okay? The kingdom of heaven. Keep that in mind. Let's continue. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, the, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending up, uh, shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee, I will make thee, I will make thee, an eternal excellency. I will make thee an eternal excellency. A joy of many generations. Many generations. Oh, say a thousand years. See? See? Now, if you compare Revelation chapter 20 and verse 20 and 21, Revelation 20 and 21, with Isaiah chapter 60, verses 100, well, actually the entire chapter of Isaiah 60. They come together quite nicely. You do that on your own time, okay? 
uh, compare Isaiah 60 with Revelation chapter 20 and 21. They fit together oh so nicely. But those are the two appearances of eternal in the Old Testament. Hmm. And the very first appearance of eternal in the New Testament, in the collection of books in the New Testament, we already looked at Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. But now look at, let's look at Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Okay? So, 45 appearances of the word eternal in the New Testament. Only two in the Old Testament. Why is that? We'll get to that. But you know where the word eternal does not appear? In the book of Revelation. You, you go ahead and look. Okay? You go ahead and look. Eternal. Let's see. Okay. Eternal. Nope. And eternity. Only one uh, uh, appearance according to this of eternity is Isaiah 57 verse 15. And it says, and the lofty one that inhabiteth eternity. So why isn't there a mention of eternal or eternity in the book of Revelation. Maybe because eternal security is not there except for those um, Jews who are sealed, the 144,000 who are sealed. Oh, really? You don't say. Hmm. Matthew chapter 25. Okay. Matthew chapter 25. Uh, Matthew chapter 25. Oh, let's begin at verse 31 on to verse 46. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 on to verse 46. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he shall sit upon the throne of his glory, the kingdom of heaven, okay? The kingdom of heaven, the thousand-year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Remember, we're likened as unto sheep. Okay. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me no and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? Note very quickly from verse 35 on to verse 39, what are all these synonymous with? Uh, works, works, are these not all works? C come on, come on, those of, you, those of you twits out there who say it's faith alone from Genesis to Revelation, um, it, is that not all works? You don't need faith in the kingdom of heaven because the son of David, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is going to be there personally, okay? That's very easy to get. Why some of you struggle with that, 
I, I, you're a novice, babe. Fine. But the others, there's something wrong with you. Okay? Let's continue. But these are all works. Okay? People. The kingdom of heaven. The thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to be all works. Okay? Please understand that. Please understand that. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Okay? Do we get that? Let's continue. Verse 40. And the king, capital K there, shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, And as much as ye have, and as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Okay? It was prepared for the devil and his angels. But guess what? You can go there too if you ain't saved. Or if you take the mark of the beast. Which all these easy believism heretics are preparing you to do in the time of Jacob's trouble because they're telling you, just believe! When the time of Jacob's trouble is faith and works. You take the mark of the beast, you're done! All your faith means nothing once you take the mark of the beast. Wake up, people! These easy believism heretics are lying to you. They're banking on the fact that uh, so many out there do not study to shoe themselves approved unto God. Let's continue. Verse 41 again. Then shall he say unto, also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was unhungered, and ye gave me no meat. Works again, okay? I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they answer, then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. Everlasting punishment, it doesn't end gonna burn you're gonna burn you're gonna burn you're gonna burn but the righteous into life eternal into life eternal okay now now in the book of mark the word eternal appears three times. Let's check them out, okay? Let's check them out. Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3. Come on, fingers. <clears throat> verses 22 on to verse 30. Mark chapter 3, verses 22 on to verse 30. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. And he called them unto him, and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? Think about those Catholic uh, Jesuit priests with their exorcisms. <laughs> How can Satan cast out Satan? <laughs> 
And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. Verily I say unto you, All sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith, so ever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation, because they said, He hath an unclean spirit. Now that's talking about the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, the unpardonable sin. And I have a video addressing the unpardonable sin. If I can remember, I'll, I'll link it in this video. But if you're looking for it, and I forget to link it in this video, uh, look in the um, the uh, popular uploads on, my, on this channel. It's um, called the uh, Can You Commit the Unpardonable Sin Today? Okay? Context is... Jesus Christ right then and there was physically present. And during the mall up, excuse me, during the kingdom of heaven, he will be physically present again. Okay? So blasphemy of the Holy Ghost or blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is only applicable when our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, God manifest in the flesh, is physically present right there. Okay? Okay? And note that eternal damnation in verse 29. Okay? Eternal damnation. Applicable when he is present. You get it? Okay? Now let's look at the other uh, reference. Uh, Mark chapter 10, which is also addressing... I do believe Mark chapter 10, verse 17. And this is referring to the rich young ruler again. We'll just read this one verse because we already read that in the uh, previously in this video. Uh, Mark chapter 10, verse 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master! What shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Now let's read verses 17 on to verse 22 again, okay? And Mark here. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Again, this rich young ruler guy wasn't addressing their God, their King, the Son of David, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, as such. He only saw just a man not their promised Messiah, okay? That's why he says, why callest thou me good? There's none good but one that is God. Saying, in es uh, basically to this guy, uh, I'm God, I'm the Father. Why, why are you addressing me as a mere man? See, thou know, uh, verse 19, thou knowest, the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come take up the cross and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. And again, the issue of the heart. This guy had his heart on things of the world, his possession, not on the things of their king, the kingdom of heaven. Okay? You get that? Now, in Mark, the other one is in... Verse 30, also in chapter 10 here. And we will be reading verses 28 on to verse 31. 
in Mark chapter 10. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time houses, and brethren, and sisters, and mothers, and children and lands with persecutions, and in the world to come, the world to come, eternal life, the world to come. What is that world to come? The kingdom of heaven, the new heavens and the new earth, okay? Um, the new heavens and the new earth is in, uh, I believe, Revelation chapter 21, okay? The world to come, kingdom of heaven. With persecutions and in the world to come, eternal life. The kingdom of heaven. But many that are first shall be last, and the last first, Okay? Now, let's go to Luke. There are only two appearances of eternal in the book of Luke. And it's both of the same uh, with what shall I do to inherit eternal life. They're both the same. But let's look at them very quick. Go to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. So this is a little too tedious for you, huh? A little too tedious? Brings a tear to my glass eye. <laughs> Luke chapter 10, verse 25. Let's see it. Luke chapter 25, or Luke chapter 10, verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? <clears throat> Oh, let's read to verse 37, shall we? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, This do, and thou shalt live. But... He willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, uh, said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise the Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him, and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three, thinkest thou, was neighbor unto him that fell among thieves? And he said, He that shewed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Okay, now the second one in Luke is Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, verse 18. Luke chapter 18, verse 18. And again, this is the rich young ruler. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Okay, that's the second appearance in Luke chapter 18, verse 18 of eternal. Okay, the rich young ruler, which we've already expounded on. Okay. Now, go to John, the 
book of John. The book of John deals specifically with our Lord Jesus Christ's deity, that he is God the Father. Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay? Okay? But John chapter 3, John chapter 3, beginning at verse 14, and we will read to verse 21. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Eternal life is equated with our Lord Jesus Christ. What he offers. Okay? For God so loved, past tense, the world that he gave, past tense, his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Question, who is he talking to? Nicodemus. Who is Nicodemus? A Jew. Not only that, but he was a ruler amongst the Jews. Uh, look at verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Okay? Okay? Let's continue. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deed should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, and it, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Why don't you look at something very interesting? Go to uh, John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Okay? <clears throat> John chapter 1. Let's begin at verse 6, and we will end at verse 14 in John chapter 1. Check this out. Okay, now how we just read in John 3, <clears throat> verse 20, uh, verse 19, on to verse 21 again. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world, lowercase l. And men love darkness rather than light, again, lowercase l. You'll see in a minute. Because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Again, lowercase l. Lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, lowercase l, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. John chapter 1, beginning at verse 6 on to verse 14. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the capital L, light, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. That all men through him might believe. He was not that capital L, light, but was sent to bear witness of that capital L, light. That was the true capital L, light. Talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, God our Father, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, spirit, soul, and body. The Holy Ghost is the spirit, God the Father is the soul, the Word made flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ is the body, one God, three parts, spirit, soul, and body. This is very simple. Let's continue, okay? Verse 9. That was the true capital L, light, which lighteth, lowercase l, every man 
that cometh into the world. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own, the Jews. And his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the capital W word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay? Okay? Now, John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Okay? John chapter 4. We will be reading verses 31 on to verse 38. John chapter 4. Verses 31 on to verse 38. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest? Behold, I say unto you, Lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal. Life eternal. That both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true. One soweth and another reap. Reapeth, excuse me. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. Okay? Now, John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verse 39 is the other appearance of eternal. <clears throat> John chapter 5. Huh. Verses 39 on to verse 47. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think that ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, Jesus, Jehovah saves. Okay? I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. How can ye believe? which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think... Now, I remember that wicked devil John Bashoff or Jan Bashoff, who's just frying in hell right now, okay? He used to go to um, verse 39 saying that, See, our Lord Jesus said that you don't need to read the Bible. But keep reading. You twits. Okay? Do not, verse 45, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. Look at this. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? So see, they just searched the scriptures, but they didn't believe the scriptures. See, had they believed the scriptures, look at verse 46.
For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? So see, our Lord Jesus Christ is actually elevating the scriptures. Okay, and what saith the scriptures? Go to Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Or is it Psalm 138? Psalm 138 or 39. I, I always get that confused. Uh, where it says, uh, Thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. Ah, yes. Psalm, uh, Psalm 138. Verses 1 on to verse 2. Okay? I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the little g gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship thy, toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word, lowercase w, above all thy name. Okay? And he says here in John chapter 5, Verse 47, but if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? See, these guys just read the scriptures without believing the scriptures. Okay? These lost devils, they can read the scriptures, but do they believe the scriptures? Huh? Tell me something. Do you believe the scriptures that you hold in your hand? It's perfect, inerrant, without error? Why don't you ask all them Calvinists that? The John MacArthur crowd. Yeah, yeah. Is there such a thing as a perfect Bible? As they would say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bunch of devils they are, okay? Now, go to John chapter 6. 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 We will begin at verse 59. And we will read on to verse 71. Okay? These things said he in the synagogue, as he taught at, in Capernaum. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he, saith, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? Now, of course, John chapter 6 here, he's talking about eating his flesh and drinking his blood, which the Catholics like to uh, turn into their little uh, bale uh, sun-shaped cookie and their filthy wine that they use transubstantiation and they abracadabra, hocus-pocus, turn it into his flesh and his blood. Okay? Verse 61. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it. He said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascending up where he was before? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you they are spirit, and they are life. And I skip this one in John chapter 6. Look at verse 54, where it says, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. And of course, the Catholics take that literally, and they twist it and pervert it uh, to me make it mean something that he is not saying, because he says, okay, uh, verse 54 was one of the appearance of eternal in the uh, book of John. Okay, we continue reading again from verse 62 onward. What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth. 
The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words I speak unto you. The words, they are spirit and they are life. Okay? Again, do you believe the scriptures? Okay? Let's continue. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. From that time many of his disciples went back, and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Shimon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Shimon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Now, did our Lord Jesus Christ choose the twelve apostles? Yes. Yes, he did. Obviously. Yeah, he chose the apostles. Yes. Okay. Obviously. That's a no-brainer, right? That will come into play a little later. Okay. Now go to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. <laughs> John chapter 10. We will read uh, um, verse 22 on to verse 30. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the, ded of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple of S in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. And he already did. They were blind. They didn't see. Jesus answered them, I told you and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my Father's hand. I give unto them eternal life. Okay? My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. The soul. The soul is greater than the body. Okay? The soul is greater than the body. Keep that in mind. Remember that. Remember that. Because the Word made flesh, the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ, what happened to the flesh? Got beat up. Got torn to shreds. Bludgeon, bloody, gangrenous on the cross. Okay? The soul is greater than the body. Okay? The soul is greater than the body. Keep that in mind. And for us today, you and I were made in the image of God, spirit, soul, and body. Our flesh is corruptible. Okay? We have scars. Okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, his flesh, even though he was buried and his flesh did not see corruption, meaning his uh, body didn't start to rot or decompose, but his flesh was cut, bruised, bloodied on the cross. See, see, he felt that. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ felt that. The soul did not. That's what that means. Soul is greater. You know, where he says, my father is greater than I. Okay? That's what that means. Okay? But he says, I and my father are one. One God, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? You get that? You get that? Okay? Now go to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. John chapter 12. <clears throat> John chapter 12. Let's read from verse 23 on to verse 28. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Okay? Look at verse 25. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Okay? And now, John chapter 17. John chapter 17. John chapter 17. Verses 1 under verse 3. John chapter 17. The true Lord's Prayer. This is the Lord's Prayer. John chapter 17, okay? These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. God manifest in the flesh. Okay? This is life eternal. Look at that verse. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Eternal life is equated with our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that interesting? Okay. Now, let's go to the book of Acts. Chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Okay. Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. <clears throat> Verses 44 on to verse 52. Okay? Acts chapter 13. This is after the Jewish people as a nation rejected the kingdom of God, the spiritual. And it came unto us Gentiles to make the Jew jealous. You have to remember, the death, burial, and resurrection, the death of the testator brought in the New Testament. His death, burial, and resurrection, when he paid for the sins of the world, when he died on the cross, buried, rose again the third day, and um, he shed his blood on the cross. That was the beginning of this dispensation. But it had to go on to the Jew first. Remember that. Okay? Acts chapter 13, verses 44 on to verse 52. And the next Sabbath day came also the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes... 
They were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first, been, should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all that all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the with joy and with the Holy Ghost. So, we see in verse 48, And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life. Well, that means they were elect. No. No. The ordination meaning by grace through faith. By grace, through faith. Okay? That's what that means. Not the Calvinistic, that they were ordained from, from the beginning. Uh, this guy's going to heaven, this guy's going to hell. No, 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 no. No, no, no. We're going to get to that here uh, pretty soon. Okay? We're going to get to that here pretty soon. But now, uh, let's see, let's see. I, we're not going to read all of these, okay? But let's go to the book of Ephesians now. Ephesians. Go to the book of Ephesians. We're not going to go through all the references of eternal. Okay? But I want us to go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. <clears throat> we will be reading verses 1 under verse 14. Okay? Paul. An apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. In heavenly places in Christ. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation in the, of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Hold on. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. The Calvinist favorite verse. Verse 5. Let me show you something. I also was sent one of these. Okay? I was sent one of these. See that? The MacArthur? Okay, yeah, I got one of these too. Check this out. John MacArthur is a Calvinist. He, he, he's a, he's a, okay? And this is not the scriptures. This is the English standard version. Okay? I were given this, by the way. I were given this by the way. This was sent to me via the mail. Now, reading the uh, footnote in Ephesians chapter 5. 
Uh, first of all, let's read what this says uh, in the um, English Standard Version uh, for uh, verse 5. Here it is in the Scriptures. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Here it is in the English Standard, Standard Version. He predestinated us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. He predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. He predestinated us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. That's it. Note the differences there. And here's what this devil John MacArthur has to say. Here's the footnote, or here's the thing for what he says. He predestinated us for adoption to himself as sons. Human parents can bestow their love, resources, and inheritance on an adopted child, but not their own distinct characteristics. But God miraculously gives his own nature to those whom he has elected and whom he and whom have trusted in Christ. He makes them his children in the image of his divine son, giving them not just giving them not just Christ's riches and blessings, but also his very nature. That's Calvinism. Okay? That's what that devil John MacArthur says. Now, let's look at this very quickly. Verse 4 and 5 in Ephesians chapter 1. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Predestination. Go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. All the way to the beginning of the scriptures. Okay? See, Calvinism teaches that, like I said, there are those who are elect to go to heaven without any free will, and those who are elect to go to hell without any of their free will, elect and non-elect. Okay? And that is their go-to verse, uh, Ephesians chapter 5. The predestination. Well, let's look at that. Let's look at that. Okay? If he, uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Okay? And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is the first prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, being manifest in the flesh. Okay? God manifest in the flesh. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And it says in Ephesians chapter 4, or in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, which I close the scriptures, okay? That it says from the foundation of the world, before the foundation of the world, okay? Come on. Okay, Ephesians chapter uh, 1, verse 4. According as he hath chosen us in him, in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Okay? And right here in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. The woman is Israel. Okay? Is Israel. Okay? And between thy seed, thy seed, the seed which is not the serpent seed thing, but his seed, the false, okay? Mystery Babylon, the great. His seed is Roman Catholicism, okay? Between thy seed and her seed, the Jews, our Lord Jesus Christ, because our Lord Jesus Christ is a Jew, okay? And it 
it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his, our Lord Jesus Christ, his heel. Okay, this is a clear prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is uh, documented also in Revelation chapter 12. I'll put the Revelation chapter 12 video in this if I can remember. Okay, if I can remember. If I don't, you can find that in the expository video stuff like that. Okay, now also too, we want uh, where it says, here I got to get the bookmarker for this. Uh, hold on one second, I'm going to pause this. Come on. All right, sorry about that. We want Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. We will read uh, to begin with verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And then we will be skipping down to verse 7. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Right here, verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb, himself. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them together. Okay? This is a type of the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. God will offer, God will provide himself a lamb. Look at that verse. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together, himself. God the Father was on that cross, okay? Not one of three divine persons, no, God himself. You want to see something? You want to see something from good old macaroni guy? What's What does the English standard perversion? <laughs> Remember that this is a Bible. Well, this is the scripture. Remember that. Okay? Uh, Genesis chapter 22. And what verse is that? Verse 8. What does it say? Oh, you're, look at this. Okay. Here's what the English Standard Version says, okay? Abraham said, in verse 8, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them, together. Yeah, okay? Now, you, you, you still with me? Read verse 8. I'm going to read this again. Listen while you're reading this, okay? Read from the scripture. Here it is in the English Standard Version. Virtually all the Roman Catholic, I think all of them do. I haven't checked them all. That's why I said virtually. They messed this up. They messed this up royally. Okay? Here it is, verse 8 again. You read in the scriptures, okay? Verse 8. Abraham said... God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together. Huh? You read along with me in the scriptures in verse 8? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. This stuff, whoops, what was that? This that verse, the way they muck that up, the way they, they muck that up, okay? Look at that. Oh, you can't see that. Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb. 
That's playing into the Roman Catholic Trinity. That's giving credence to the Roman Catholic Trinity. Do you know that there used to be a ESV that had the Apocrypha in it? It's out of print now, of course, but. So, good old macaroni here with his study Bible and the Bible version that he is using in verse 8 plays on to the Trinity. When in the when in the scriptures, scriptures don't teach a trinity. Trinity is heresy. Yeah, yeah, you made it this far. You heard me right. The trinity is satanic heresy. I remember I've, I've, uh, I've watched a few videos by that um, Justin Peters guy, a go, uh, yes man for John MacArthur. Uh, he talked about the Trinity. You should have seen his eyes. It's like, this guy denies the Trinity. Not talking about me, but, you know, about somebody who had enough brains and believed the scriptures that don't teach the Trinity. Should have seen his eyes. He's like, this guy denies the Trinity. Yeah, yeah, as do I, as do I. I'm not a Trinitarian. Well, what's the point? What's the point? What's the, why did we look at this, Okay. From the foundation of the world. Now, did God know that Adam and Eve were going to do that? Okay, did he know that? Yes. Yes, he did. Okay, he did. Why did he do that? Why did he bother them to create um, um, everything anyway if he knew what was going to happen? Because it was for his pleasure that all things were created. Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. Why did God create things? Why did he make you? Why did he make the world? Why did he Why did he even bother if he knew all this was going to happen? Uh, Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy Pleasure, they are and were created. Why did God create the world? And for thy pleasure, they are and were created. Because he wanted to. Quite simply, because he can. Someone asks you, brethren, why, uh, why did God create such and such? Take him to Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, okay? Because he wanted to. But see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. God chose, we saw this in Revelation, uh, in Genesis chapter 3, 15. God chose the eventual death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, okay? The way of the cross that is what he chose, okay? And when our Lord, God our Father, God manifest in the flesh, came unto his own and his own received him not, okay? He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, okay? That began this uh, dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. But the way of the cross was chosen from the beginning. So when you look in... Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, when you look in Ephesians chapter 1, especially verse 5, having predestinated unto us, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Predestinated, the cross, okay, the cross. The method, the way, the cross, okay, that was predestinated. And when you or I come to him broken and contrite and believe on him, and in that brokenness we call on him, okay, we are of those who, of this predestination. God predestinated the cross, 
Okay? Okay. Oh, oh, oh. I know what you're, what you're thinking. Hold up. We'll get to it first. We'll get to that. Hold up. Okay? Hold up. All right? But the cross, our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, paying for our sins on the cross. Okay? As we read in Genesis chapter 22. Go back there again. Okay? Go back there again. That is the predestination. Not that one was chosen from the beginning to go to hell or chosen from the beginning to go to heaven without their free will. That's heresy. And that is what John Calvin and his uh, philosophical religion teaches. Okay? That's what it is. But see, the predestination is that of the cross. Okay? Okay, go back to Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Okay, verse 8, provide himself. That is the predestination, okay? But now you might be saying, well, then they were looking forward to the cross from the very beginning. <laughs> Matthew, go to Matthew chapter 16, okay? Matthew chapter 16. This very easy to debunk, okay? Very easy to debunk. Matthew chapter 16. All right. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 16, beginning at verse 21. From that time forth began Jesus to shew unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Now, if they were looking forward to the cross all the way back there in Abraham's time, right, then Peter should have been like, I, I'm, I, I don't want to see you do that, but let's, yay. They would be ecstatic, right? They would be like, we're, we're right with you, go for it. Kind of cheering them on, I guess you could say, I don't know. But they would have intuited that, right? if they were looking forward to the cross all the way from Abraham, right? No. Verse 22. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Now, you Catholics out there, uh, surely the first pope <laughs> should have known this, right? Also, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, okay? They had the scriptures. They had access to Isaiah 53. They should have known that, right? If, it was, if they were looking forward uh, uh, to the cross from Abraham, whatever, okay? They didn't know that. The scribes and the Pharisees. And Sadducees, they didn't know that. They had the scriptures. They weren't looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament. Because look at verse 22. Then Peter, be, then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. If they were looking forward to the cross all the way from Abraham, should have been ecstatic. Should have been like, Yea, Lord. Yea, Lord. But no, he's like, be it far from thee. Be it far from thee, Lord. This shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. For thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. And oh, 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 now you might be thinking, well, 
What about in Hebrews chapter 11? Where Moses, right? Hebrews chapter 11. Hold on, brethren. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get my bookmark back here. Okay. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, let's read verse 23 on to verse 29. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Right here. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. So right there, it says, esteeming the reproach of Christ. So he was looking forward to the cross. Uh, no. Um, here's a news flash for you. Jesus Christ is God the Father. <laughs> Melchizedek, hello? Okay. Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay, get, get, get this through your head. Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay? Get that through your head. So, verse 26 here is not giving credence on to Moses was looking forward to the cross. And also remember that the uh, Pharisees and Sadducees said, we are Moses' disciples. But this man... We know not whence he is. Okay? Uh, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Uh, verse 26 is simply referring to our Lord Jesus Christ as the Father. Okay? <laughs> Jesus Christ is God the Father. So, Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had res re respect unto the recompense of the reward. You see, it's not that Moses was looking forward to the cross. No, no. Uh, verse 26 is attributing unto Christ that he is the Father. Okay, that's all that means. They were not looking forward to the cross all the way back there, even in, in the Garden of Eden. No. But the Lord predestined the cross all the way back there in Genesis chapter 3. That is the predestination. Okay? And we are the predestinated when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, on the finished work of the cross that he did for us. Okay? That's the predestination. The predestination is the cross. Okay? That God the Father would die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he would shed his blood on the cross to make atonement for sin. Okay? Okay? That's what it was. Not that this group is elect, this group is not elect. That's heresy. And that is what Calvin and all the bosom buddies of John Macaroni here believe. And tell me, play that into the serpent seed doctrine thing. There are some that are good and some that are bad, right? Some that are elect and non-elect.
yeah, yeah, don't don't be fooled by John MacArthur with his stunning dialecticals and stuff like that. The guy's a devil. Okay? The guy's a devil. I I I had to had to address that. Had to address that. Now Let's uh, look in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 11. Sorry for that little web of trail. Uh, anyone who has talked to me personally uh, outside of here, you know that I like wabbit. Ephesians chapter 3, <clears throat> uh, verse. Eight on to verse twelve. On to me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. Hidden from the beginning of the world. <laughs> to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of of him. Now going back to Ephesians chapter 1, okay, picking up from verse 8, oh no, uh, picking up from verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his, per, according to his good pleasure, which he hath proposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, kingdom of heaven, uh, uh, inheritance in the in kingdom of heaven, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Okay? Lord put in motion the cross from the beginning. They were not looking forward to the cross from the beginning. No, they were not. Already proved that. Okay? But that is what he ordained, okay? And today, you come to the Lord Jesus Christ in repentance. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. You repent of your self-righteousness, okay? And in repenting of that, you will have what is called godly sorrow. Sorrow that your sins put the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. And when you come to him broken and contrite, and you believe on him, calling on him because of your brokenness and contrition, and you are saved, born again, and converted, you are predestinated to go to heaven. Do you get it? Do you get it? Okay? Calvinism is heresy. Calvinism is heresy. Be aware of that, brethren, okay? Now let's continue. Verse 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed. Sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise which is the earnest of our 
inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, the catching way, unto the praise of his glory. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you this may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. In the saints. The inheritance. Kingdom of heaven. Okay? Our inheritance within the, the kingdom of heaven. The thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? You see? You see? Okay? Okay? Now, I, I forget where I said we were going to read to uh, initially. But while we're at it, let's finish the whole chapter. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. That world to come. The kingdom of heaven. Okay? Okay? And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his building, the <coughs> which is his body. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. And let's read in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 10. For by grace are ye saved, not some heretical, Calvinistic, fictitious predestination, but by God's grace. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. What are these works? The works of the law. The works of the law. You easy believism heretics who uh, talk about Romans 3, uh, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified. Okay? Not by works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And how do we uh, how do we handle that one? Second Corinthians, chapter five. Second Corinthians, chapter five. <clears throat> Uh, oh, wait, 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 am I, uh, oh, wait, 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 beg your pardon, beg your pardon. Oh, hold on one second, got to find this. It would have helped if I had 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and not 1 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm sorry, brethren. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 on to verse 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, 
who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Go back to Genesis chapter 22. Come on. Genesis chapter 22. We're looking for verse 8 again. Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. God will provide himself a lamb. And if you're looking at that, uh, there's no commas, semicolons. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Then semicolon and comma up there. You see? Do you see? Now, we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Ah, not, not the concordance. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 9. All right. Hebrews chapter 9. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 9. Well, actually, let's let's look at the re uh, references in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter five. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter five. I think we already looked at this, but verse nine. Okay. Uh, though uh, beginning at verse eight, on to verse nine. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Okay? Eternal salvation belongs unto our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? We did already look at this. Beg your pardon. Okay? And Hebrews 6.2. <clears throat> uh, verses, uh, verses 1 on to verse 3 in Hebrews chapter 6. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permit. Uh, we ought to read verses uh, 4 on to verse 6 now. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, the kingdom of heaven, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Um, brethren, to renew them again to repentance, okay, um, says right there that if they fall away, they can't get it back in Hebrews chapter 6. Maybe because... Eternal security is not there in the time of Jacob's trouble. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 9. Okay. Hebrews chapter 9. Remember, Jesus Christ is the author of eternal salvation. And we saw that eternal salvation appears here in the book of Hebrews. Okay. Let's read Hebrews chapter 9. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first, 
wherein was the candlestick and the table and the shoe bread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiness of all, holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant. And over it, the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot speak, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Again, another proof text that they were not looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament. Let's continue. Which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect, as pertaining to the conscience which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of Reformation and not the Protestant Reformation. Keep reading. But Christ, being come in high priest after the order of Melchizedek, Melchizedek, Jesus Christ, okay? But Christ being come in high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of the heifer of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God and for this cause he is the mediator of the new testament that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Eternal inheritance, the kingdom of heaven. Okay? For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Notice how Moses died before going into the promised land. And those laws and ordinances, and I'm gonna gonna get into this in great detail whenever uh, get the um, touch not mine anointed video done. That's gonna be a two parter for sure. But Moses died before he went over into the promised land. Okay, he died before they went over, because all those were to be the way that the Jews were to live in the promised land. Okay. But we'll, I'll touch on that in detail in a, in a later video. But let's continue, okay? For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. When did the New Testament begin? With the birth of Jesus. Are you not reading? Are you not reading? For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament 
which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of the things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often, Catholics, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he often have su suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Under the law, eternal security was not there. No one was sealed under the law as we are today in this dispensation. The Holy Ghost could come and go, come and go, come and go. Okay? Okay? And the blood of bulls and goats covered sins, while the blood of God himself did away with them. Okay? We just read that. All right? The blood of bulls and goats covered them, while the blood of God himself got rid of them. Cleanses them. Cleansed them. Okay? And for that, 1 John, 1 John chapter 1. Come on. Come on. Got to get going. My wife's making some very good dinner. And um, ain't going to miss that. Okay? But uh, 1 John chapter 1. Come on, fingers, work with me. 1 John chapter 1. Ah, uh, verses 5 on to verse 10. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin, while the blood of bulls and goats just covered them, while the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Blood of bulls and goats covered the blood of Jesus Christ, God the Father, God manifest in the flesh. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. There it is, okay? If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. I, am, I ain't a sinner. You're calling God a liar. Because you do not believe the record that God gave of his son. Okay? But see, under the law, even in the dispensation of the Garden of Eden and the dispensation of the patriarchs unto the law, okay? Eternal security, that sealing of the Holy Ghost was not there, people. So, 
They were not eternally secure. If one in the Old Testament died and went to Abraham's bosom, as it says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 19, where uh, when our Lord Jesus Christ went down and preached to the uh, spirits in prison, okay, in Abraham's bosom, okay, he goes down, and once he had paid for sins, took them with him, because the way to heaven was not open yet, because our Lord Jesus Christ had not shed his blood on the cross to cleanse us from all sin, while the blood of bulls and goats just covered them. Eternal security was not in the Old Testament. Eternal security is for us today. We already looked at it. We are sealed today. If you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. That was not there in the Old Testament. And anyone telling you that is lying to you. They're lying to you. It wasn't there, friends. It was not there. Okay? It wasn't. So, if someone trusting for eternal salvation in the Old Testament, no, no. They died right with the Lord. They went to Abraham's bosom. And when he went down, brought him up because he had paid for the sins of the world on the cross by shedding his blood, opening the way to heaven. What about Enoch and Elijah? Yeah, yeah. They were, um, they were translated, okay, that they did not see death. Yes, yes, okay? But remember, Elijah is going to see death um, as being one of the two witnesses. And the, one of the, uh, the second witness, it's the two witnesses in Revelation are Moses and Elijah. Uh, remember how in the book of Jude, how it says that the archangel Michael was disputing with Satan over the body of Moses. Okay? Okay? And no one knows where his sepulcher is because Moses is going to be one of the two witnesses. He's going to die twice. Okay? Okay? Elijah is going to die once as one of the two witnesses. Yes. Enoch and Elijah. They were taken. Okay? Yes, yes, the exceptions to the rule, see. But if you died in the Old Testament, right with the Lord, you went to Abraham's bosom, okay? Eternal security was not there in the Old Testament. Eternal security is right here, right now, for you or me, okay? You need to get saved. I'm going to put a link in this video um, let us reason together, you and I. Please watch it. Please watch it. Okay? Eternal security was not there in the Old Testament, dear friends. Okay? Eternal security is here for us today because we are sealed until the day of redemption. Eternal security is not going to be there in the time of Jacob's trouble. The 144,000 Jews that are sealed, yes, yes, the 144,000 Jews, Jews for the time of Jacob's trouble, yes. Other than that, you take the mark of the beast, you're going to hell. And see, you got these guys trying to tell you that eternal security, faith alone from Genesis on the Revelation, that eternal security was always there. They're lying to you, friend. They're lying to you. They're lying to you. Okay? They are lying to you. Because they are of Satan himself. They're working for Satan. Okay? Satan is their father. Excluding the novice and the babe. Okay? Because if someone is truly saved, born again, converted, of the church of the living God, the spirit of truth is going to guide you into all truth. The spirit of truth, dear friend, is going to teach you how to rightly divide the word of truth. Being dispensational. Spirit of truth 
will reveal these things unto you. Takes time with some people, yes. But the spirit of truth will reveal these things unto you. Someone telling you. Someone telling you that eternal security is there for you during the time of Jacob's trouble. They're lying to you. And they're seeking to damn you. Because you go into that time period thinking it's just believe. And you take the mark of the beast. Okay? Now like I said, I wasn't. we weren't going to look at every single reference of the 47 references of um, eternal. Okay? Alright? But... Eternal is mentioned only twice in the Old Testament. And eternal, as far as eternal salvation, eternal as inheritance, is by Jesus Christ. God manifest in the flesh. Okay? Eternal salvation is given to us by grace through faith, by our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, dear friend, Right now is the best time to get saved. Okay? So, that is going to be it for this video. I did kind of play around with this a little, this microphone before doing this. Um, hopefully, hopefully this works. I would hate to have to redo this. Oh boy. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Um, more videos are going to be coming here. Uh, uh, the uh, Touch Not Mine Anointed video, that, that's going to be, that's going to be big. That's going to be really big. That's going to be a two-part video. A lot of stuff to go over in that. Still finalizing all of that. That's, that's going to be huge. That's going to be huge. But, um, anyway, brethren, thank you. Hopefully, hopefully this has helped some of you. Hopefully. Thank you so much for watching. If you do, I love you. And we will see you in the next video.